home theater setup. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. This is not a tech review, product review type of channel, but since it is all about movies and movie related topics, and since uh, you know, I, I recently got a request to recommend a Blu-ray player, uh, someone hit me up with a comment and said, could you recommend a Blu-ray player? I figured this would be a good opportunity to talk about home theater setups and why you should have one. Now, I'll keep it simple. Uh, I'm not going to make this like too tech heavy and get into all the details and stuff, but I am going to give you some tips, some advice, uh, some recommendations, if you will, uh, a few items to make your movie experience that much more enjoyable and most importantly, immersive. That's what it's about. It's 2021. We got to get into it. We got to, we, we, your, your movie theater thing at home has got to be tight. So we're going to get into it next on Film Fan. Welcome to Film Fan, my channel where I talk film and all things film related and make film recommendations, movies and such. If that is also your thing, you like hearing about that stuff, love to have you here. If you're new and you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you know when I put up new content. Very pleased to have you. All right, let's get into it. All right, so since March 2020, we've all been spending a lot of time at home and with our and with the theaters closed. Uh, all of our movie watching activities have been reduced to whatever is streaming and whatever we may own in our personal collection. This comes with a lot of convenience, of course. I mean, you don't have to deal with, you know, crowded movie theaters and overpriced snacks at the concession stand. Plus, you have the comfort of just being in your own home and your own couch or your own chair and your own pajamas or butt naked if you want, sipping a drink and doing whatever you want with whoever you want while you watch movies. So, you know, it's a, there's there's some upside to this, right? But... What about the movie theater experience? All right, I'm, I'm a guy, I've said it numerous times on this channel, I love the theater experience, going to the movie theater, sitting there, the lights getting dark, and sitting through the previews and seeing what's coming up, what I'm going to get excited about, and just being surrounded by people, not always being surrounded by people, not too close, but being around people and, and hearing their reactions and all that stuff in the theater. So I really prefer the actual theater, but... It is what it is. When we can't get to the movies, we have to watch movies at home. And if you're going to do that, you may as well do it right. It is 2021, people. No more watching, you know, TV with TV speakers and, you know, a 30-inch TV or a 25-inch TV in black and white somewhere in the, in the, in the dark. That's not going to cut it. It's not going to work. We're going to fix that right now. Now, here's the deal. There are a bunch of options for setting up home theater. I'm talking about you know, building dedicated theaters in your home, projectors, massive screens, and hundreds of thousands of dollars on the whole setup, you know, just, you know, the details. But that is not what we're going to be discussing here. What we're going to talk about here is pretty much like I'm talking to the average person who, you know, may not have a, a home theater set up right now. And they're just looking to upgrade, step it up a little bit, make sure that their viewing experience when they're watching streaming content or if they're watching, a, a, a um, you know, a 4K disc or something, a Blu-ray or DVD or something that you just step up the game a little bit. This is not going to be a techie talk kind of thing. I don't want to do this here. There are a ton of channels on YouTube. You can find links to all over the place. You can Google search, find all the details about specific products, um, all the tech talk. You can do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get you to up your theater game just enough, to, you know, with the fundamentals, the basics, and I tell you what you need uh, in case you're missing any of that stuff. Okay. So why bother with upgrading your setup? Let's start with sound. Looking at your current TV, and even if you just got a new TV, the built-in speakers, for the most part, suck, and they won't deliver anything close to a theatrical experience. So, what do we have to do? We've got to get the audio handled separately from the, v from the TV. And that moves us to sound bars. Sound bars are a great, simple way to get much better sound other than what's coming from your television built-in speakers. Most of them are pretty easy to set up and many don't take up too much space while complementing your existing television setup. Now, when looking for a soundbar, what you're going to want to consider is the size, design, functionality, sound, and connectivity. Obviously, the sound. Yeah, you gotta have good sound. Consider your space. 
Consider where your television currently is, consider where you wanna place your soundbar, and that will pretty much determine what size or design you may actually want. Now, most soundbars that you've, uh, you've probably already seen are usually in front of the television, if television is on a stand of some sort, uh, like a console table, or if your television is mounted on a wall, usually a soundbar can be mounted directly underneath that. There are plenty of options for that. As for sound quality, there are options out there ranging from, you know, like I said, you know, thunder pumping, two bass speaker setups, Dolby, DTS, DTX, Atmos, et cetera, et cetera, surround sound, super surround sound. There's tons of options out there. And you're gonna find a whole bunch of terms, letters, numbers out there, all associated with sound. Again, the, the Dolby Digital, Dolby Pro Logic, Dolby Atmos, Dolby DTS, Dolby DTX, et cetera, et cetera. For the most part, what you're gonna to wanna to go with is Dolby Atmos. That's pretty much the way to go, but it's not totally necessary. I'm just throwing that in there, letting you know, again, we're not gonna to get too tech heavy in this and explain all of those things. Just know that Dolby Atmos is probably where you're gonna to wanna to be. So you're gonna, whenever you're looking for your soundbar, wherever you're shopping, and again, when you do research on YouTube or something, you're probably gonna look for something that's gonna deliver Dolby Atmos. Okay, so back to the soundbars. Another thing to consider when purchasing your soundbar is its connectivity. Now, again, not doing a technical thing, there's tons of different ways that you connect audio equipment to your television, but I keep repeating this, but I, I, it just it's necessary. We're not gonna get into it. I just know that when you're doing the research on your soundbar, you're gonna wanna look at connectivity options and more than likely it's gonna be HDMI. That's pretty much the standard way to go. That's gonna be your best way to go at this point. So you're gonna be looking at HDMI cables. I'll put, you know, something on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. In addition to that, you're also gonna wanna be looking at the connectivity in terms of how many of those HDMI ports are actually available. Um, if you have a dedicated Blu-ray player, something that's playing your movies on via disc, or you have a gaming system, an Xbox, a PS5, or both, or something along those lines, you're gonna to wanna to be able to connect them to that soundbar directly probably. So just something to keep in mind. Now, let's talk TVs. We'll keep this simple. If you're purchasing a new TV, like everything, it pretty much comes down to budget. That said, what you should do is buy the largest screen you can fit in your space. Dead up, serious, period. I mean, you at least want a 50 inch television and you'll certainly want a 4K TV. Size wise, it comes down to whatever your space can actually have. So if you have a dedicated space and you know you can fit a, if you're, you're gonna buy a, uh, a 55 inch television, see if you can go to the 65 inch television. If you're buying a 65 inch television, see if you can go to the 77 inch television. You know, if it's in your budget and you can do it and try to get the largest screen you can, you're, you're, you're never gonna be upset that you got the largest screen. You'll always, always, always be pissed off though that the screen is too small. Trust me when I tell you this, all right? It's just hands across the board, like you, you'll, you'll find most people will tell you the same exact thing. Now getting back to the 4K thing, uh, does it make a difference? Does it not make a difference? It does make a difference. It's pretty much the standard now. There was a time where there wasn't even a lot of 4K content, but now we're pretty much in that phase where 4K is readily available. It's pretty standard and you can get some really great TVs that are 4K that are next to nothing. I mean, they're not out of price range anymore. So you definitely want to go with a 4K TV. It does make a difference in terms of resolution. Again, without going into a whole tech thing about resolution and lines and pixels and all that stuff, just go with a 4K television. And just like the soundbar thing, when it comes to audio, right? When it comes to video, you're gonna hear tech talk. You're gonna see all the sorts of, you know, you're gonna see stuff like Dolby Vision, HDR, HDR10, HDR10+, 4K, 8K, OLED, QLED, micro LED. Don't let any of that stuff confuse you. And again, when you go out and you're shopping for your television, just talk to the people in the store, talk to whoever is gonna be helping you. Hopefully you find someone who's reputable, you know, reasonable and reputable and talk about these things. For the most part, I will tell you, you may want Dolby Vision HDR10. Those are pretty much the standards right now. You're gonna be looking for that. And again, a 4K television, stay away from 8K. You don't need an 8K television at this point. Just forget it. Um, and the difference between OLED and QLED and micro LED, again, I'll save that for either another video or you can find information on that on another channel. But stick with a 4K television, look for Dolby Vision, look for HDR10. Now, like the soundbar, when it comes to your TV, consider your space and where you'll actually be placing your TV and how it's gonna work in your space, all right? So just consider the screen size, considering whether you're gonna, you're gonna mount it on a wall or if you're gonna leave it on a stand, just take that into consideration. Oh, and while we're talking about that, we're talking about mounting television on the wall. One piece of advice I can tell you, do not hang your television too high on the wall. I see this all the time. I see um, people have a fireplace or a mantle or something in the living room and they'll place 
the the television above the fireplace. It's kind of like a trending thing to do. Uh, and I guess it makes sense. And usually, you know, if it's in the family room or the main room where the main television is, that's where you would put the TV. Just don't put it too high. TV should be a little high. So you're watching, when you sit in the movie theater, try this experiment, because I remember I did this at some point, um, sitting in a movie theater and looking at the screen. And by default, you are kind of naturally doing this. You're back this way you're sort of angled that way you're not really looking at a movie screen um, theater screen this way you're looking at it sort of up here but what you're not doing is this unless you're in the front seat and you're you know you're in the very very front row and you got the screen right here but that's just uncomfortable it's bad for your neck and it just it's not a pleasant viewing experience so don't hang your television too high there are resources online again where you can find probably even from your television manufacturer they have like those measurement things where if you have a, i think if you have a 60 inch television it should be 58 inches off from the floor to the middle of the wall or something along those lines i don't know but look for information on that now one of the other things you're going to notice when you're looking for a new television are uh is the fact that they, you know they're smart tvs and a lot of them come with you know built-in you know features and a lot of streaming apps are built in that's pretty standard nowadays so you have if you're a big netflix watcher most tvs are going to come with these streaming apps built into them already so you're going to have netflix you're going to have hulu probably amazon you know now a lot of them have disney plus built into them or you know whatever but you know pandora you're going to find uh, fandango whatever different services are going to be in there fandango that's Fandango is that actually a service? that's where you get movies where you uh, find that about movies anyway you know what I'm talking about but yeah if you're streaming content and you're into streaming content then most of the newer televisions are going to have some sort of streaming service on there and so you will be fine uh, now what about playing your own movies from your own DVD or Blu-ray collection if you have one like if you got a bunch of DVDs you got a bunch of Blu-rays that's where a dedicated Blu-ray player comes in pretty simple you know, it, it's basically what it is. Put a disc in, watch a movie. Actually seems kind of old school now, right? Yeah. So why would you put a disc in a disc player or buy a, you know, Blu-ray player and go through all that hassle if you can just stream via the built-in apps that are with most TVs like we just talked about? Good question. Really, it's simply a matter of choice. One is way more convenient and one is much better when it comes to quality. Now, I did a video on the differences between streaming media and physical media on this channel uh, maybe a little while back. I'll put the link to that up here and I'll also put a link to that video in the description and you can find out the differences between streaming media versus actually putting a disc in and which is actually better. For the sake of wrapping this video up though, I'll simply say that my preference is physical media. So you need a TV and a soundbar. That's the basics. If you already have a television, then you know. First of all, evaluate. It. Let me. Let me. Let's. Let's back it up. Everything comes down to budget. Yeah, I get people who ask me questions. You know, one of my brothers asked me about buying a laptop recently. He's like, "Oh, I'm going to buy a laptop. What should I get?" I said, "How much money do you have?" Because it really comes down to that. You could tell someone, "Well, you should probably get the." MacBook Pro loaded with everything in it and spend $4,000, right? But if that's not your budget, then you're not getting that computer and it changes the entire conversation. When it comes to your home theater situation, if you have a television and it's you know relatively new and it's got the right connections on it and you just want to add a sound bar to it, then your focus should just be on getting yourself a really good sound bar so you can enjoy it and pay attention to the connectivity issues. Because depending on how old your television is and what you're going to connect with and what sound bar you're going to get, that could become a slight thing for you. So that's where your focus will be. If you're actually going to step up and you're like, you know what, I'm going to buy a new TV. I watch Film Fan and he told me I should step up my game and I'm actually in the market for a new TV. I want to get a 4K TV. Go out there, grab yourself a TV, grab yourself a sound bar. All right, do yourself a favor. Watch movies the way they're meant to be watched. It is an immersive experience. It pains me to see people watching TV any other way. And it pains me to have conversations with people who tell me they're watching uh, you know, some great film and they're watching it on their iPad or worse, they're watching it on their phone, their Samsung or whatever it is, or they're watching it on some tiny television and the volumes barely, you can barely hear it. it you know, movies this is where I start ranting and get into the whole fanatic thing, the film fan thing. It's just, it's an experience, the sound, the, the, the ambient environment, what's happening, immersing you. It's not like a book, a book, you, you know, you read a book, you read a couple chapters, you get bored, whatever, and you go back, you pick it up another time you break this sort of flow. Movies, you don't break that flow. Movies, you got, in, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, four hours with the new uh, Justice League, Zack Snyder thing. I did a review on that, the trailer, so you can see that on this channel as well. Um, I'll leave a link in the description if you haven't seen it. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a flow that's supposed to keep going and breaking that messes that up. So 
the sound being in, 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 you know, enveloped in, in all the audio that's going on within the film. It creates emotion. It creates tension. It creates, you know, it's just that thing. And the visuals, you know, being able to see the richness of color, being able to see detail in things, that changes the experience and how you actually enjoy a movie. So I end this video with emphasizing, do yourself a favor. We're all home. We don't know how much longer we'll be home, but either way, either way, even without COVID, you're going to want to take the time to make sure that when you do come home and relax, if you want to watch a movie, if you're single, you got date night, Netflix and chill, whatever it is, make your home theater experience worth it for yourself. Still go to the movies. The movies are, I don't think the home theater thing yet is a substitute for the movie theater. There's a lot of movies I still feel like I have to see in a theater and I won't watch at home. But there's a shit ton of movies that I don't need to go see in a movie theater, a romantic comedy, um, you know, a movie, you know, a Disney movie or something like that with the kids. I don't need to see that in the actual theater, but a big action, spectacular kind of thing, something like uh, Mortal Kombat 2021. <laughs> I'm going to do a review of trailer reaction coming up on this channel soon on that one. But anyway, something like that, you want to go to the theater. So make sure your home theater setup is tight. Watch movies, enjoy movies the way they're meant to be enjoyed. If you have questions, actually, you know what? Let me do one more thing. Let me quickly give you just a couple of recommendations as far as like, you know, I, I wasn't, I, my plan was not to do a whole thing and just tell you what to buy, but when it comes to televisions and Blu-ray, so Blu-ray player, relatively inexpensive. The Panasonic DPUB820 is actually a really good player. And the 9000 is also a really good player, but it's more expensive. It's about a thousand bucks for the 9000. Um, television wise, um, I'm an OLED fan, so I have an LG C9 OLED. So any of the LG OLEDs, uh, C9, CX, like these are televisions that are that are a little more high end. So on the lower end, you can look for things like I know Hisense has some pretty good televisions. Vizio makes some pretty good budget televisions. They make a TV. I think it's a 43 LF 62. I'll put it in the uh, description, but it's like 300 bucks for that one. That's a 43 inch. You should probably go higher. You probably go like a 55 inch or something, spend the extra money. But you can get televisions nowadays for 500 bucks, 600 bucks, 65 inch televisions, 4K televisions. So um, my recommendation for sound bars, again, this is going to come down to your preferences in, time, in terms of like what your budget is and also what your space is like. For example, my sound bar, the one that I recommend often uh, for people in that range who want this particular, you know, um, it's Nakamichi. It's their Shockwave Ultra 9.24 SSE edition. That has two separate wireless subwoofers to it. So it's kind of like a thumping bass kind of theater sounding kind of setup. It's also got the front channels. It's got the whole sound bar that goes under the TV, but then it's got rear channels. So it's actually a little more elaborate setup than just one sound bar. But if that's what you're looking for and you have the space and you have the budget for that, I highly recommend the Nakamichi. Um, the other ones in to, uh, that I would look at are Sonos Beam, which is pretty good. That's a budget one. It's like 400 bucks. There's no subwoofer with that. Um, Samsung makes one, the, the T5 550. Uh, I'll put links to this stuff in the description because I'm just reading it off my computer here. Vizio makes a couple of uh, Yamaha makes one, the YAS209. These are all decent. Like I said, when you go to Best Buy or wherever you're going to go, let them know, hey, you know, film fan said I should get a whole. They're not going to know who I am. There's no sponsorship. There's nothing here. I'm just saying when you go in there you talk to them say hey this guy i watched some guy's video and he said i should step up my game when it comes to my home theater i need a sound bar talk to them they should be able to guide you through something all right i think that's it i think you get the point of what i'm saying here right look uh remember something about the movies all right if you haven't seen a movie it's a really old movie and you've never seen it it's brand new for you so go ahead and watch it all right love the movies lose yourself in the movies find yourself in the movies i'll see you on the next film fan